Hey, this is Flo and welcome back to the widget kit course. In this episode, I will show you how to respond to user interactions. So how to notice that the app got called or got opened when the user tapped on the widget. Let me show you the simulator for that. So right here, I have our stocks app widget. And when I tap on it, then the app will open. And in this case, as I just implemented a very simple version to show you how it works, it will um, have a text here with the symbol that was selected in the widget configuration. So the widget shows the stocks data for Apple. And um, when the app is opened, then this AAPL string is passed into the app. And we could now work with it and, for example, open a detail view or whatever. So that's what the app will look like in the end. For that, there is basically three steps. So we will have to construct a URL with which the widget will then open the app. So um, to actually get the symbol inside of the URL, we will um, add a computed property to our stock data model. So we will just call it URL and it will also be of type URL. And you can actually make this optional because the function that we're going to use will work with optional. But I will make it non-optional for now because there's actually two ways to implement this into the widget. So now we will have to construct a URL here. So I will use a guardlet just to make sure that it's not optional. So guardlet URL equals a URL from a string. We will talk about this string in a second. And if this is not possible, then actually I will throw a fatal error because the URL should always be able to get constructed. And in here I will just say fail to construct URL. And then in the end, I will just return the URL like this. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual URL. So you can make this whatever you want. But here is a simple idea of how I would implement it and which will give you actually a lot of customizability. So let's see how it will look like. So first of all, I will put the app name basically as the scheme. So which would be HTTPS in a regular web URL. Then colon slash slash. Then um, the name of the route basically. Let's call it this. So I will call it symbol. And then we can pass arguments in here. So what I will do is just pass our, um, how is it called, metadata.symbol. So if we scroll up here a bit, you can see we have a metadata inside of the stock data, which has the symbol of this stock. Okay, and I will just put that into the URL. Why am I structuring it like this? You will see that once we are inside of the app, and receiving the actual open URL call, because then this will make a lot more sense, I would think. Okay, second step is go into our stocks widget entry view. So in our widget extension, the view that is actually displayed. So in a past episode, I showed you how to work with different widget families, but we are just focusing on the system medium style for now. And what we can just do is to the outermost container here, so the vStack, we will add the widget URL modifier. And in here we can pass the URL that should be passed to the app when it's open through the widget. So we can just say our entry dot stock data, this is optional, dot URL, so the computed property that we just created over here in the stock data. And now every time that the app is opened, when the user taps on the widget, this URL will be passed to the app. So as you can see, this takes an optional URL, and that's why it's fine that our stock data is actually optional here. Another way would be to not put the modifier here, but instead wrap everything in a link. So I will just show you how that would work right here. So just use a link with the destination of our entry.stockdata.url. But the issue here now is that this does not work with optionals. 
So you would have to force unwrap the stock data, which is kind of sketchy, I would say. And then inside of the link, you can put everything um, that you want the user to be able to tap on. What this allows you is, for example, um, having in a, in a larger widget, you could then have um, different stock symbols, for example, and depending on which one the user taps on, the app should perform something different when it's opened, so you could have different links in a grid layout, for example. Okay, but in this case, we don't need it as there is just one uh, symbol that we're talking about, so we can just use the dot widget URL modifier on our outermost container vStack here. Okay, and that's already everything that needs to be done in the widget extension. So next, we can move back into the main app and specifically into our content view and into the body of the content view. Now here, once again, on the outermost container, you can also do it, um, for example, in the list, but I will do it on the navigation view. You can have a modifier on open URL and this allows you to, actually let me transform this into a trading closure syntax like this. This allows you to grab the URL that the app was opened with. Okay, and inside of this modifier, we can now grab the URL and work with it. And this is the part where we are actually going to talk about the scheme and the host. So we will just make sure that they are what we want them to be. So guard URL dot scheme equals to stocks app. So this part here, then URL dot host equals to symbol. So this part here. And now we can also say let symbol equals um, URL dot path components. And let's just take the first one like this or the second one like this. Let's also say else. And if this doesn't work, we will just return out of the function. And now we can actually work with this symbol that we grabbed out of the URL, which is basically this last part here. And just for simplicity's sake, I will do it quick and dirty. So I will just add a state var symbol and I will just make it an empty string in the beginning. And then at the top of our list, I will just add a text of this symbol, just like this. Okay, actually, since the URL is not uh, optional, we can uh, remove it from our guard statement and make it a bit simpler and then just say, let symbol equals URL.pathComponents one, one line lower. And then we can just say self.symbol equals symbol. And that way we assign what we just got here into our state variable. Okay, and that is already it. That is how the effect or how you can actually send data from the widget to the app when the user taps on it. So let me show you again. Here's the widget which shows data for the AAPL symbol. The user taps on it and the AAPL symbol string is passed into the app. Okay, that's it for this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.